Welcome to my first vlog, and by vlog I mean a bunch of PowerPoint stills that I narrate after I put it into an editor. Today I saw two things that were interesting and I wanted to comment, and I decided this might be good. The first one is a something Microsoft did that could change the, the game against Sony, and it was kind of something they should have done. First off, the second thing I'll talk about is Nintendo. But the first thing I really need to get into is Microsoft, and they're finally ditching that creepy Kinect camera and doing an actual price drop. I hated that thing. Next to the whole DRM, it was the reason why I was staying away from the Xbox One. If you look at some of the things that they have patented using the Kinect, it scares the crap out of me. One of the things that came out during the whole Xbox One DRM thing was that their new Kinect could actually look into the room, tell if there's too many people playing the game or watching the movie, and shut the system down. Yeah, that's a real big selling point. I've always wanted a console that tells me I have too many people watching a movie or playing a game in the room and just shuts the thing off. Yeah, that's what gamers have been clamoring for since the beginning of Atari. Seriously. Um, and then the whole DRM thing also hurt them. They've been cleaning up after Mr. Matrix's comment from last E3, telling people if they don't like the price or their DRM, they can always go buy a 360. Most gamers responded they'd go out and buy a PS4 instead. And whoever was his replacement deserves a good paycheck from Microsoft. So if they cleaned up his mess pretty good, they stopped the DRM right away, and they started marketing correctly. However, let's just say gamers were still ticked with Microsoft, and Sony's price was cheaper. The camera's big selling point is it helps with the OS and user interface. You can tell it to do things, and your system just responds. My thought on it is cool, but at the same time, P.S. The whole point of an OS is it gets you to your game and movie, and then it kindly goes away until you need it again. It's not a real big selling point. It should be about the games that you can play and the things you can do about your games. Again, this price drop and getting rid of the Kinect makes me want an Xbox One a little bit more, but I'm still leaning more towards Sony. I like their streaming ideas, and I like their sharing ideas. The Xbox One is on my radar now, so good job Microsoft. Now let's move on to another company that needs to scrap a useless peripheral on its system that makes it overpriced, Nintendo. The day Mr. Iwata came out today saying there just needs what to be one game that will help sell the Wii U. Again, this is still acting like it's 1990s and the only thing is Sega and Nintendo. Right now Nintendo is dealing with a whole bunch of other things. For example, the game market is no longer just two consoles. You can throw in handhelds, mobile games, free to play games, and even Facebook games. So yeah, to say one game will cater to every gamer is not correct. Even more BS is if you look at Nintendo's software, is it's not the problem. Nintendo has always had good software. Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and even Super Smash Bros. and Mario Kart, which are spinoffs, still attract millions of gamers to the system. The problem is, is what do we get after we're done playing these games? And it's nothing. Nintendo doesn't really have the Street Fighters, it doesn't have Final Fantasy, it doesn't have Kingdom Hearts, it doesn't have the Metal Gear Solid. Those all go to the other companies. And that really does hurt Nintendo. Even when Nintendo Wii U does get one of these third party games, oftentimes it's lacking online or it's lacking DLC. So that's Nintendo's problem right there. It needs to get with the third party. It needs to pay them for some exclusive. Pay them for a Assassin's Creed DLC exclusive. Pay them for, for a Final Fantasy exclusive. Go to Capcom and say we want you to finish 
making Mega Man Legends 3, except it's now on the Wii U. Do something like that to excite the fan base again, to let them know there's more after Mario than a six month wait for a next Zelda. That is Nintendo problem. They need to start thinking about this. They also need to also improve their online immigration. They need achievements, but that's a discussion for another time. Right now, Nintendo, my thought is, is um, use your money to go after third party and, um, like I said, scrap the useless peripheral, which is your tablet controller. I have only used it for one game that I see as really fun, and that is Game and Wario. And of that one fun game, it really only had one fun mode, which is Gamer. The rest of the games really weren't that memorable. Gamer was because it was you playing a game on the tablet while watching the screen to make sure your mother doesn't come in and shoot you out. So, that, yeah, one fun mini game out of your whole library actually uses the device in any meaningful way. I say it's time to scrap it <laughs> and instead bundle it with a regular controller. If people want to go out and then buy a tablet controller separately, you can have that for sale. But I'd say scrap the tablet, go with a traditional controller, and sell it on the Wii U for like $250 if you don't want the tablet. $250 for a 32 gigabit should help Nintendo a little bit, that's what I would do, rather than wait for the Magic Game Fairy.